Welcome to the Life Hacks Show. Life Hacks gives you proof hacks and tips for the best version of yourself. And here's your crash test dummy for a better life, Marcus Moira. Hey guys, this is another episode of the Linux Podcast and this time live from the um, co-working space on Changu Bali, um, Dojo Bali, which is really, really, really nice. I've been into co-op and thought I've seen the best co-working space ever and then I went into this one and I'm now I'm totally confused. So it's, it's just cool. And I'm sitting here with the founder uh, of this uh, co-working space, um, Michael. Uh, welcome to the show and thanks for your time. Hi, man. How are you? I'm doing great as I'm allowed to work from your co-working space and I just had a dip in your pool here, the first co-working space with the pool. So as I just mentioned, it's, it's just awesome. How did you get to all these tiny detail ideas and, and the stuff that you can find all around you in this co-working space? Because it's, it's not, it's very unique. Um, well, I think we're pretty fortunate that the, the place used to be a villa before, so it had a pool in it already. Um, and then we've just been fitting it out. So it's comfortable. I think that if I am just modeling on a place for a place where I'd like to work really. And I figured if when I first came to Bali, it was like I was looking at offices and working in an office and that really didn't appeal to me. Like I was in Bali. So why would I work in a closed walled office? So I was thinking, looking at the idea of co-working spaces and then found this and basically making it into something that I would want to work in and like lots of little nooks and um, rooms and different areas to go into so it you know it feels like home yeah totally and you were just mentioning you were working from office here on Bali so obviously you also did some some work coming here to Bali so what was the reason coming to Bali and what what are you working on or what, where are you working on yeah um yeah well I'll, really wasn't looking for an office for myself actually i was working from my home office I had a pretty good home office with a pool here in bali but before that about 10 12 years ago which i started a development office over here we have developers um so primarily like net asp jquery all that sort of stuff um and we've been working with them quite a while in um in indonesia and i was working for my had my company in australia and i was come flying up and Uh, up all the time and I was decided that you know it would be good to live up here as well um, and then I was looking for an office for our developers and I was going to work in there and th that kind of merged and changed into actually creating a co-working space yeah yeah and what is the number one reason why you choose to start a business on Bali or why yeah decided did you decide to to stay on on this Awesome island. So what is the number one re reason here for, for people coming to Bali or especially for you? Um, well, that's a complex question. Um, there's lots of reasons, I guess. Um, the, the lifestyle is one. I think everyone comes over here because they think it's going to be cheaper to start with, which is one reason I guess I was looking at. Um, it cannot be and it can be. It depends like how you live in your lifestyle here. Um, But I guess it was like tropical gardens, surfing. Um, but one of the reasons why I guess I stay is the people, like the local people. They're super friendly, you know, w very warm and welcoming. So it makes things easy. It's hard doing business here. But, um, yeah, it's – I know blue skies every day. You go for a surf in the morning. You got great food. You got international chefs from all around the world. So you, you can always – go out and get a great meal there's parties pretty much every day probably except for monday and tuesdays um so you can do yoga you can do whatever you want so um it's very diverse and from where i'm from in australia and perth i guess i didn't have that opportunity to go do all that different stuff so bali was very attractive yeah yeah so it's very very various so you can do lots of different stuff like in Obud, if you are into all these healthy or cleaning stuff and yoga stuff, but yeah. it's catching up all over the the island, I, I guess. But also here in Chengdu, it's one of the best surfing spots, I think. Uluwatu too. Yeah. 
you can do business. Um, people are friendly. The sun is shining. Yeah. The, the water water is very warm. The ocean is very warm. So yeah. I think it's a mix of all these all these stuff together, yeah, right? Definitely. Yeah, I think the quality of the quality of life, like you know, you can get that balance more that most people are looking for. You know, so I guess a co working space, you know, offers that facility for people to come and get that balance and come to us come to a space which is cool but also like most people live in pretty cool places as well you know you can live in a, like a hundred year old indonesian juggalo teak juggalo and you know in a jungle and with a pool you know or you can live in a modern super villa or a guest house so there's just there's just so much variety um you know and you can do it on a really small budget or you can go high end and stay in the most expensive places as well so it's really what you make it here it takes it, half the fun is actually trying to find everything and trying to explore you know like yeah. it's just you're constantly exploring yeah so so also for you being on this island for quite a long time it's, it's still constantly exploring and new things popping out popping up yeah i mean pretty much nearly every weekend we'll group of friends or whatever we'll go off and go somewhere random like whether it's on bali or just another island like we can fly across to another island in an hour yeah. and we're just over in sambala with waves are amazing um you can yeah you can drive around in your scooter and all of a sudden go down a road that it doesn't look like you can go down and then you open up onto rice fields and jungles and waterfalls and like there's no one around and Yeah, you got, you've got to explore Bali because most people are concentrated in the tourist areas. Um, but yeah, if you get it, if you get on your bike, it's the it's the best thing to experience things. And I'm always finding yeah new places now. There's always something in Indonesia, full stop, that will surprise you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I also think enough said. Uh, you have to explore it yourself, and yeah. it's like. A huge adult playground and <laughs> behind every corner you don't know what happens next and you're on your scooter and then the ceremony passes by very spiritual it's it's just cool here um i really enjoy it um i know you were working really hard and, and quite quite tough on on your business before um for a long time and put lots of effort into it um till it is there where where you are now um could you Describe it a little bit, your way from how you started, where have you been and where are you now? And yeah. also talk a little bit about the challenges. Okay. Yeah, um, I, f <coughs> I probably first started my business when I was around 15, like just back in the 96, 97. Um, was doing websites back then. Studied interactive multimedia and instructional multimedia. I don't think I ever finished it because... Halfway through the course, I was getting so much work. The industry was new. Um, I actually built a website for my old man's business back then. He was selling like luxury boats. And um, off that, I got a lot of work because the people that could afford computers back then, I mean, they were quite expensive. And they, if they were connected, they were generally doctors and lawyers and people that were actively using the internet Um And I got a lot of business out of that. So I just grew very organically, went from myself working at home for like a couple of years to um, then eventually employing a couple of people, working from um, a little office in Fremantle and Perth. Um, we were doing like print, web, just lots of design stuff. Um, and then we... Then eventually I moved back into my house and had a big studio at the back of my house where we had about four or five people. And that's when I sort of started working on um, my software, which is called Mintox, um, which means awesome. It's a West Australian colloquialism. Um, and yeah, it's like a it's a it's a big platform. So we do now that business has been running like Clue Design for about 19 years or something. So it's The platform we've got now like supports big insurance companies um, like Caterpillar, wineries, engineering, like a whole gamut of different businesses. So we developed that for many, many years, set up offices in um, India, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia. Um, 
And yeah, it was, I, I, I just kept pushing myself, like push, 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 push. And I guess at the end of it, I was getting really burnt out, like after doing it for about 20 years. And, um, but we got up to, you know, really good, really profitable kind of business where, um, I was able to move out of it. Um, the other thing is like when we we're building, I was always very conscious of like the technology, obviously I was in the technology business. So like, just like, um, I'm very sort of anal when it comes to like the filing systems and like how you, like you set up your filing system on your computer and how, um, you know, you're using lots of cloud services to collaborate with your staff and your file systems to everything, like how all our infrastructure in our business is totally on the cloud. We don't have any physical servers or anything. We had, haven't had that for years. So I guess we're quite ahead of our time with that. And then the, even the architecture of our software and how we build things is all deployed through the cloud on Amazon. Um, and just being mobile, like setting yourself up to be mobile because moving to the cloud and having your file systems, like which most, most people do these days, enables you to have such great flexibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool, very inspiring. But on the other hand, you also said you, you paid a high, high price, you were like really burnt out and then at a certain point there was nothing more going on. You, you were really like, burnout and worn out how did that feel and what did you do next um maybe it was my quarter life crisis i don't know um but i guess just being in front of a computer screen all the time just <laughs> bends you out <laughs> like i you know um so you never went out before doing parties or oh yeah social life or oh there was a, there was probably three or four years where i didn't have a social life i was just working full time 14, 16 hour days for at least four years. Um, and that was making basically the framework, the systems, the processes that ran the business. Like I was thinking big about like if I wanted to leave, like, like I was working in the business but I wanted to work on the business and then how would I get out of it? Um, and that just takes a lot of time, like a lot. And I always had a core group of advisors around me as well. So, like, there's bad business coaches and clients sometimes and just friends and associates that would always, like, coach and mentor you to – if you had problems, you know, because being a sole director, um, you don't – sometimes you're listening to all the problems of everyone on your team, but you've got no one to talk to. Yeah. So that, that's a that's a big thing, and I guess um, after a while of just doing that for twenty years, it gets takes takes its toll. And I guess I wasn't having any balance, so I was working a lot, um, you know. So in the computer, um, if that makes sense, um, just always in the computer. Um, so I had a, when I put the business under management, um, and then moved to Bali. Um, so that all manages itself now. And I've got a great team in Australia that, that, that manage it. Um, and that allowed me to have some time off. And then having time off, I surfed and partied and relaxed and drank coconuts and um, surfed more and then sort of got bored after <laughs> a few years doing that and then was looking for some um, – inspiration or people to talk to that were you know some do purpose again. some purpose and doing some good stuff um and i actually went up to the co-working space up in a which was a hubud and went to a think tank there and i was like wow this is awesome so um yeah i, I probably I got the i like a bit of the idea from going up to Hubud and seeing that and thought, okay, that would be a good extension of what I'd previously been doing and what I'd like to do is connect and have lots of cool people around you and like inspirational people working on great stuff. And then I, the other sort of thing was having more purpose behind what I was doing because before I think the reason why I was getting burnt out was I wasn't having, didn't have any purpose as well because all I was doing is chasing money. You know, like trying to build something to make as much money as possible. And then when you get the money, you 
you're like, what next? <laughs> like, yeah. it's like there's nothing. Yeah. So you can have the fast car, you can have the boat, you can go traveling, you can do what you want, you can buy what you want. Um, but then what is, what after that? So um, I thought that if we were, if I was going to set up a new business, I wanted to have more purpose behind it and that was what the dojo is about because, I mean, the dojo is the literal tran- Japanese translation means place of the way. So it was a way of the way of the warrior, the way of the meditation, the way of, like a training place for to reach enlightenment. But um, the purpose behind this was that, you know, people have more conscious, make a conscious decision no, sorry, they're more conscious about what they're doing. So what we're planning to do is like do a lot of community outreach programs and, um, you know, help and support um, people in the community in Bali in particular, like with some environmental issues that are going on here. Um, and I just believe that co-working spaces and these types of spaces where they're like a hub where all these people are coming together – um, very smart people that have moved out of maybe the traditional um, corporate environment and they're looking for something different. You know, they have the opportunity where they can give back, they can they can um, they can help people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the good thing is they're traveling the world. That means they get the big, big picture of what's really happen, happening and not living like more or less in their micro bubble at home. And they have these entrepreneurial skills and these two assets i think meshed are like yeah it's you can really change something yeah well they're very privileged yeah you know that's that, one percent as, uh, yeah the, yeah they're v- very privileged and that's what um i think digital nomads you know they need to be a little bit more conscious about that like what what is their impact when they're traveling around the world you know mm-hmm. um and then i think kind of they've got a bit of bit of an obligation to um educate where they go and help um help people um and i think if everyone was doing that you could create you know real positive change yeah and how do you tackle this especially with dojo bali do you have some projects running um yeah we've i'm just starting now because we've been running since october um and We've just been doing a few little things like supporting the Bye Bye Plastic Bag girls, which are um, some young girls from Indonesia, like petitioning the governor of Bali to get rid of plastic. Um, there's a couple of other environmental projects. Is when we went to Sumbawa, we saw the Harpen project, which means hope in Indonesia, where uh, Carlos is like working over there as an NGO and just, like single handedly looking after a thousand kids with medical education and he needs a lot of help. So, um, we were looking to sort of, uh, back that project by getting school supplies and get some money for him. Um, and th- there will be more. So, you know, ultimately I'm only doing it myself as well. So, um, slowly, slowly, as they say here, um, And bringing more of that into it and then like even putting actually a percentage of the revenue from people joining up would go into these projects but the people joining up would could read about it and then they could allocate where they put those funds to. Um, and that's just mandatory but we cover the cost, we manage it and we administer, we administer that. And I'm, I'm sort of – I like those grassroots projects where you can go out and actually see there's an impact, you know, Like with Carlos, it's amazing. You can see the impact that he's that he's doing. Um, so be looking at more of that stuff. Um, probably, you know, anything around environmental startups and um, things like that would probably be a good fit for this business. Yeah. Cool. You were just saying it's mandatory for everyone who checks in here into Dojo. Do you think every nomad is already aware of their of their opportunities and also responsibility they have because I think lots of people are watching us and, and looking what, what DJ nomads are really are and if they just go into these countries, have a good life and, and doing this geo arbitrage thing or trying to do an impact. Well, that's difficult. Um, I think inherently most people that I speak to are wanting to do good things um they don't have the mechanism to do it you know so 
I think there needs to be places around like co-working spaces or any, I don't know, something else that enables and gives people the opportunity to to just do what they're doing. But by doing what they're doing, they're sort of they're fulfilling some sort of purpose behind them. Um, then naturally people will go to different places that they think that that purpose is aligned with what their values are. Um, I'm not sure like that everyone thinks like that. It would be good if, good if they do. Um, yeah, um, when, when I say it's mandatory, it's like we're just taking it off the top of our gross, at, you know. So it's like it's not costing the person anything. It's costing me something. So, and it costs us to administer it and all that. But I think that's, you know, it's yeah. not that high a price to pay. No. It's a really cool initiative. And yeah, at least I think it makes the people feel good because they support something. They don't have to, to put extra effort into it. And maybe you, you really got this awareness also in these people and sharpen it. Um, You just mentioned you only opened in October. Since then, it's just half a year. I don't know if, and so it's a very short time. Do you see already any changes in uh, terms of figures? How many people check in here? How many people are interested? What the level of the people is um, who are coming here, or also the expectations of the people who are checking in and and hitting jojo um yeah so october it's probably what four or five months um so yeah obviously it's it's building quite a lot um and i think we're over 120 members the last few days we've gone up another 10 or something so and i've there's a lot of inquiries for june and july um it's seasonal here so that's going to be interesting to see how that happens um, after talking to other space owners, like from the CU Asia conference, like they, when they came here and at the end of the conference, it was, they're like, okay, this place is quite different. It's very transient, but I think that's, that's a massive advantage because while we might not have people who are staying here long, they might stay here a month. They might stay here six months. We've got some guys who've been staying here like the whole time we've been open and they're, they're intending to stay for the next couple of years. There's quite a few of those. The, that's a big benefit to that sort of core community because we're just getting talent from all over the world coming in. And that could be from like a, a data scientist from Russia yeah. working on AI, which that was, we had an amazing session on that to fashion designers, to environmental people, social development people, people doing their thesis. Um, yeah, d lots of people in the digital marketing space. Um, programmers, graphic designers. So it's so broad. Videographers. The list. The list just keeps going on. Um, so in that respect, I think this it's a big benefit to everyone here because they get to meet and network with a lot of different people. Mm. Um, I don't know where it will go. I'm not really pushing it to be honest, and yeah. just. You're trying to find that balance. So if I, if I if I start pushing it, I'm sort of not getting my balance, am I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Then you're back in the trap yeah. like before. Yeah. Um, do you also have some teams here or startups working from here? I know from other co-working spaces, they are after uh, startups to like build up incubators in their own spaces. What do you think about this? Um, initially, I thought it was like a good idea to get startups and put an incubator in here. Um, that's, we do have startups in here. There's a few guys working on a couple of different apps and other platforms. Um, the well, After talking from Alex from Indie Hall, actually, when he was at the CU Asia conference, he's, he kind of convinced me that startups can be kind of dangerous for the community as well because they just come in and um, suck it dry and then move out and they're not really – adding anything to the community. I think if, uh, like, ideally if it was a perfect world and we, I would want startups that are aligned with our sort of values about our community uh, outreach programs and things like that, um, that could be 
more aligned. But at the end of the day, there's there's always going to be people working in the digital space, which you know I've got a lot of experience in that, and um, but yeah, there's no reason why they they can't work here, and it's um, yeah, yeah. Uh, as it's taking so so good off, like your first uh, co-working space here in Chengdu, are you planning to to do some more um, stuff in terms of co-working spaces or in this industry? Yeah. Um, well, initially I was actually planning to go to we're building one in Seminyak, and that was the initial plan of all the architectural drawings are all done, and it's basically a building permit stage. Mm -hmm. But I uh, sort of put that on pause while I'm. Um, running this one and getting this one up to a level where it can tick over, where I can work on it, not in it. Um, you know, that takes hard work. So I sort of gave myself six months to really push that and so then you can move on to the next project. Um, and then there's lots of different things that are starting to pop up. I mean, there's a lot of talent around. There's a lot of people that want to connect um, from co-living to workations and all that sort of stuff. Um, so at the moment, I'm happy just proceeding with this and then see how it goes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this is what, for, for everybody who's involved in this movement at the moment, it's just a roller coaster ride and, and see what's next. And so many things and opportunities pop up. So it's so hard to predict the future or anything, what will happen just within the next six months, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's the exciting bit, bit about it, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I'm just I'm just happy just to create an environment where people can just work and um, have fun and meet people and sort of get started. It's a good place if you're coming to Bali just to come in and meet people and connect and then all of a sudden you've got, you know, 10 friends around you that you can go out and do stuff with really, really quickly um, and um, kind of have some purpose behind it as well. Yeah. This is what I really like about like your place, coming to Bali, don't know anyone and looking for like-minded people for some inspiration to, to ping ideas on your level. You were mentioning like this before where you also felt lonely and then just having a very soft launch, coming into a co-working space and coming into dojo and finding the right people and you're supporting these, uh, all these community events you're setting up. So yeah, well done. Great job. Thanks for your time, Michael. And see you somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Peace and out. Yes, yes, yo. This was another episode of the Life Hacks Show. If you love what you are listening to and can use some of the tools and hacks we are sharing on the Life Hacks Show, I would be more than happy if you can give me a review or rating on iTunes. Follow me on facebook.com slash Moira Markus and just ping me and give me some feedback that would mean the world to me so long have fun peace and out yeah.